legends are true. But overwhelming power! The sauce of destiny. Yes! The most legendary sauce has arrived as McDonald's transforms into the anime world of McDonald's. The greatest flavors unite in all new savory chili McDonald's sauce to make your 10 piece with nuggets, fries, and Sprite ultra powerful. Unlock manga comics with every meal and sit down for a new anime short every week only at McDonald's. Ba da ba ba ba. Go! I participate in McDonald's for a limited time while supplies last. <laughs> In 2005, two brothers hit the road to chase demons and fight monsters. You know, like you do. After 15 years, they made television history and built a community of dedicated and lasting fans. Sure did. I'm Rob Benedict, and I played God, a.k.a. Chuck Shirley. Yeah, you are, and yeah, you did. And I'm Richard Spade Jr., and I play the Archangel Gabriel, a.k.a. the Trickster, a.k.a. Loki. I also had the privilege of directing a bunch of episodes of the show. Have a few more AKAs, why don't you? Jeez. A.k.a. you're a jerk. Though we've been involved with the series for years and multiple seasons, we never sat down and watched the entire show. Oh, that's not true anymore. Now... We're deep into it. We are going episode by episode and diving in with the folks who made it to bring you an insider's point of view and some great behind-the-scenes stories from the writers, producers, crew, and actors. And you're getting our pure, honest, unfettered reviews. And along the road, let me tell you, we're becoming fans. Buddy, we are super fans. We've heard you saying it for years, and we finally get what all the excitement's about. This show holds up after all this time and deserves to be watched and rewatched. We will be hitting on some spoilers, so consider yourself warned. And if you have any angry emails you want to send, please direct them to Babo. Thank you for joining our journey and listening to Supernatural Then and Now. Well, this is exciting. It's so exciting. Robert, how are you? How are you holding up in the face of all the excitement? I'm holding up great. Let's get it started officially, and then we can talk about how I'm holding up. Hi, everybody. Right. This is Rob Nick. And I'm Richard Spate, Jr. And we're talking about the season four podcast finale. We're doing it live in front of a studio audience. That's let's do it live. Yeah. Everybody's in the private Zoom room. And let's say live in live. a studio. If they live in a studio, then we're in the studio. You know, for our, our Patreon listeners are joining us today. And if you haven't yet, consider supporting the podcast by joining our Patreon. It's quite a club. You get to do fun stuff like watch us perform episodes live. And there's so much great stuff going on, Rob, that I don't even know. Patreon is just where it all happens. I don't even want to get into what happens there because I feel like it's going to make people jealous who aren't a member of Patreon. Some people say, don't rub Patreon in our face. We don't have that kind of scratch. We don't have Benedict money. And I get it. But I'm telling you, we make it worth your while. Thank you for that. As always, I've always <laughs> loved being under your bus. But, um, only on Patreon, we are doing a live Q&A, plus announcing the Archangel, winner of the signed script, Monster, at the end of this book. My question is, who signed it? Is it me? I Am I know. signing? I haven't signed I anything. Anyway, we got a, a signed script. We got lots going on. This is just a classic. It's already a classic. Wrote, Much like season four itself, this podcast is a classic. The first thing we, we want, want to do is talk about, we watched the gag reel for season four. Now, we haven't done this yet. We haven't watched a gag reel, but we did for this uh, season. And uh, boy, lots of laughs, lots of oh, the laughs. Here's a question. Did they, did they do a gag reel for seasons one, two, and three? Is that... This is a question, a great question that we could ask our research team. Well, I think the yeah. fans are answering. They're saying they seem yes. it's a split camp. A lot are saying yes, and a lot are saying yes in all caps. So right. I right. I guess I'm not we sure what that a couple means. Of yes, you dodos. Um, uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, there's a couple of yeses or three S's. So I don't know really how to take that answer. Yeah. Either so an affirmative or I don't know. And so, somebody says the season two one is okay. So I guess it's not that great. It's just all right. Yeah. So I'm not sure, but we think maybe there are guy rules for every season. Yeah. But this one had a lot of classics, Jared farting. Jared Farding uh, has to that's go. That's always there. a classic. I don't know if that's a if that's a gag reel or that's just something on the reel that makes people gag. You know right. what I mean? It feels well, like it's well. less of a joke and more of a desperate cry for some sort of medical attention. Well, I can tell you, I was uh, I've been on sets many times when that happens, and certainly if you're there on the day, no joy should. in Mudville when Jared uh, farts. Quite a gag. 
then we get to see at the end of this one, we get to see a casting photo collage, and that's kind of fun just to see all the that's casting. That's great. Great to see the uh, cast uh, and collages. I mean, you're a collage guy from way back. You've always liked groups of photos. You know what I mean? And that's fun to see. I'm a collage guy. Yeah. I remember in college, you're part of the college collage club. Um <laughs> You were dating a girl named Colleen at the time, I believe. And I believe it was like Colleen's Collage College Club. Right? I'm I'm not wrong. No, no, you're right. And you were a member of the Make Fun of the Collage team. Right. We were right across the hall. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We worked together a lot. It's weird. Uh, And then there's Bob. Bob, we get to see Bob looking so fresh-faced. Oh, Bob looks so great. So fresh-faced. Yeah, you think he has an age, and then you go back and look at the uh, gag reel from season four, and you're like, four. man, he's aged. Yeah. Uh, and the yellow snake, the big old yellow snake that was cr- crawling around. I, I'd forgotten it. I even, look, here's the thing about season four. We had a strike last year. So ri- we had, we started watching season four last May. Yes, yeah, talk, we- talk, talk about fresh face. You and I were fresh face when we started season four. Yeah. And now look at us. So I'd forgotten that there was a big snake. I gotta be honest. When I saw this, uh, this these uh, little prompts for the gag reel, and it said the yellow snake, I was a little afraid that was a euphemism. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I missed that in the gag reel. But I think it's actually a snake. That is a relief <laughs> to yeah. everybody. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I forgot about the yellow snake. That was a that was a big old snake. Yeah, and it's so yellow. It's so yellow, and it's so snaky. And then there's Todd Stashwick hitting Jensen in the face. That's that but was, you know when I see that you know when I see that snake, you know what I want to do. Uh oh, what? Slow down. <laughs> Proceed with caution. I mean, if it was a red snake, I'd stop completely. But or a green snake, I'd you know, oh, go on my merry way. But a but a yellow snake, I'm Dude. just gonna slow down. Yeah. yeah. Proceed with caution. Yeah, that's like uh, with a banana. It's the opposite. If, you, if it's a green banana, you wait. <laughs> I know. If it's a yellow banana, you go. And if it's a red banana, you go. Where did you get that <laughs> <What>? banana? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a bit you did you've done before. What's that from? It's uh, it's uh, what's his name? That comedian that you and I love, uh, who died or di- died young. Um, oh, it's Mitch uh, Mitch Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. yeah. He's like, <laughs> where did you get that with, banana? Yeah. At, <laughs> at a stoplight. Yellow means slow down. Green means go. Red means stop. And with a banana. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mitch Hedberg. Why wouldn't uh, he in the gag reel? He's hilarious. I you know what? Know. Supernatural. I just found one of the one of the few flaws in season four. Very little Mitch Hedberg in the season four gag reel. Yeah, yeah. But you know who was on it? Uh, Todd Stashwick, who had mentioned it in the, the episode we do it, did with Todd. Uh, and he and we see him hitting Jensen in the face. And then there's a quick shot of me holding a coffee cup and the set shaking around me. I don't remember that happening. That's just one of those things where like, wow, I guess I was there, but I don't remember that. Well, you're on films, do, you know, when it happens, so. Yeah, not I the first so. time I'm on film doing something I didn't remember doing. Yeah, but one of the rare times it wasn't me filming you. I was gonna say, just check your phone. Exactly, exactly. I, it would be how cool it would have been if Mitch, if uh, Todd Sashford could hit Mitch Hedberg in the face. Yeah, which would yeah, have meant still- that Mitch Hedberg was in the uh, episode. All right, so yeah, gag reel. This is starting a trend we'll, for seasons uh, following. We will make sure we check out the gag reel. It's, it's oh yeah, it's we're my- gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be we might start with the gag reel and end with the gag reel. Maybe a gag sandwich. Can I tell you something? I'd never a gag seen. Witch. A- I'd never seen one of the guy real. I've never. seen one of the later seasons ones. Yeah, I don't think I have. Uh, maybe I have. Oh, I, I'm sure you yeah. have with you and a red blazer doing something. I mean, I'm sure in the, as the later years and you were super involved in the show, you probably saw a gag reel. I remember years ago, and this is going back a minute, but not as back, not as far back as season four, but like somewhere in the teens seasons, I remember getting a gag reel to, for approval. They would send the link and like, are you cool if we use these this this shot? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I saw those. Yeah, what am I talking about? Yeah, I've seen yeah. Those. So you'd see it for you know, I think. Yeah. Legal and you reasons. know what else? They they'd show them at uh, some of the parties that they had. They would show the gag reel that season or something. And maybe even at Comic Con. I don't know. Probably maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comic Con. They've done that. That's right. So basically, you've seen a, an s load of uh, gag reels. I forget what I said. Um, forget what I said. Okay, but. Now we're talking about season four. It's our wrap up, guys. It's our wrap up. So we're talking about season four and Rich and I have a job right now. And that job is to go through the episodes and pick our top five episodes. And we have to agree on what those top five episodes are. I feel like this is the hardest part of the whole job. And this is a Uh hard job. This is not a job for the faint of heart. Uh, Doing a podcast, Uh it's uh, physically exhausting. I've got Uh calluses. 
Um, uh-huh. But this is the we've part up, that really just we've been up all night elevates the difficulty. Yeah. All right. So uh, why don't you throw in? I'm gonna I'm gonna be the first one to elect an episode to be one of our top five favorite episodes of season okay, four. Okay. Throw has, one. Throw one in. And and I, I'm gonna keep a list over here. Uh, I'm gonna actually write it down, Rob. A lot of people say I don't do much of the podcast, and it's all Rob and you Steve. Know, and to them, I say you're right. But today, I'm gonna I'm gonna write stuff down. Good. I was gonna write it down. Rob. No, put your pen away. Put your stupid dumb yeah. pen away. I got it. Put it away. Here we go. You ready? Yep. My first, my first entry. Yep. Season four favorite episode is the first episode of the season, Lazarus Rising, where we introduce the character Castiel. I feel like it's a epic one for the ages, and we get to meet everyone's favorite, Misha Collins as Castiel. I hadn't seen the whole episode before this, but uh, before that, I've certainly seen shots from that episode time and time again. Lazarus Rising. What say you to that? Lazarus Rising. Okay. Well, I mean, first of all, sh- sh- I-, I think it's a rock solid one. It's a real hard one to argue with. Introduces okay. one of the most critical characters of the entire rest of the season of the series. Mm-hmm. And it's done in such a cool and cinematic way with the bulbs exploding. And I mean, it's it's awesome. If for, if right. for no other reason, that shot alone that became so symbolic uh, and meaning, you know what I mean? I got yeah. it so meaningful. I, I got to go. I, I don't disagree. Yeah. Now here's one I'm going to throw throw into the mix. Okay. And my reasoning's going to be a little. You got to stick with me here. Oh, no. I'm 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 not going to jump the shark. I don't really think the episode is one of the top five, but with the name "Jump the Shark," it is rocketed to the top of my choices. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> and by the way, I get news for you for anybody uh, any youngsters at home. If you see a shark in your path. Jump it. You definitely don't want to just wade through it. You want to, you want to just avoid jump the that. shart at any <laughs> oh, at all costs. So jump the shart is in there for that typo alone. It's in there. <laughs> uh, well, I think we I think uh, we have to list again. So I'm let's not debate that. We'll yeah. uh, now you name another nomination. We're, nomination. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, gonna, yeah. we're gonna. I, I I agree. That was actually was a good episode. And uh, J.K. Yeah, Apple. but it jumped the shart. It's a it's a stroke of genius. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to nominate Monster Movie, written by. Yeah, you took, took the words right about. Yeah, yeah. Monster Movie, great episode. Great episode. Um, Todd Stashwick was incredible. Uh, the way it was right. shot, the way it was done, uh, just epic. This is Jared Padalecki stopping in to say hi and let you know that we've got to take a quick break. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? What would you do? Would you go for a run, take a nap, read a book, watch Supernatural? Maybe all the above. Or maybe it's that thought that brings in a sense of panic. I mean, the question is, what time for what? If time is unlimited, how do we use it? Sometimes the hardest time for people who work every day is the weekends. When people are faced with a choice, if I've got this free time, what do I do with it? If this rings true for you, maybe therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. I've benefited from therapy for many years now, and I talk openly about it. I still go to therapy um, about once a week, and it's just such a nice time for me to to have that free space to to try to figure out who I am, really, and what I really want and what makes me happy. It's super important and often neglected taking this time. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient and flexible and suited to your schedule. So all you do is you fill out this brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist, and then, oh, get this, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge because they want you to be happy. That's what this is about. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash S-P-N-T-A-N today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash S-P-N-T-A-N. What's so special about Hero Bread's soft, fluffy, and delicious breads, buns, and tortillas? Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 grams of net carbs, 5 to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. Made with natural ingredients, Hero Bread supports gut health, promotes weight management, and helps maintain blood sugar. 
Hero also drops other limited edition ultra low net carb goodies like rich flaky croissants and buttery brioche slider rolls. Head to Hero.co to shop today. Thank you for supporting Supernatural then and now. And now, back to the show. I'm going to go off script here and throw one out that is never mentioned by the fans at conventions. Okay. Is it I noticed because I, I came along. I'm like, I've never heard of this one. It never referenced. I never see clips of it, but I still thought it was cool, interesting, and resonated with me. So I'm going to break new ground here and put yellow fever on the list. Yellow <laughs> fever. Uh, we got we got spaded again, everyone. You've just been spaded. He says something. You think it's really he's, but he's joking <laughs> because everyone names yellow fever. He says happy things. birthday. You think he has a cake, but no, it's a <laughs> box of frogs. Uh, yellow fever, <laughs> classic episode written by Andrew Dabb. And, yep. you know, Dean catches a disease that makes, makes you scared until you die. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, indeed. But um, we get to see some great comic acting from uh, Jensen Ackles. Mr. Jensen Ankles. Um, all right. What do you got? Well, I am going to, gosh, so many classic episodes. I know, man. It's a tough one. A lot of people kind of dismiss season four as a whole lot of nothing. But I think Robin yeah. and Rich are here to say yeah. it's actually a great season. Right. It's a, it's a great season. We may be the first to say that. Right. But we no, are yeah, calling right. it out as a great season. And anybody who's well, chiming in on it's a great season, welcome to the bandwagon. Thank you for, uh, yeah. for joining yeah. us. And hey, uh, just a shout out to those people. Uh, every season of Supernatural has a gag reel. You should check out. So if you're That's new right, to that, you might not know that. I'm going to throw out the very last episode of the season, Lucifer Rising, uh, written and directed okay. by Eric Kripke. It's just, you know, it, it, it was a great finale to a great season. And in a, in a bit of a cliffhanger, yep. Eric being there, putting his stink on it. Pretty cool. Yep, yep, yep. You got uh, D- Dean and Sam at odds. Ruby's trick Sam into killing Lilith. Yep. And bring Lucifer. 100%. Love it. I'm going to leap in here. Gosh, there's so many good episodes, but I'm going to say there's two that I'm really torn. I'm Mm -hmm. wondering if you'll say the other one. I'm going to say, I know what you did last summer. The Julie McNiven intro uh, intro episode. Oh, Um, yeah. I thought that was so cool. And that whole revelation of what her character was, who she was. Yeah, that she's not crazy after all. Well, I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to nominate this because I know you won't. And uh, it's an episode near and dear to my heart. I think came out pretty well as uh, my first episode on the show, The Monster at the End of the Book, directed by Mike Roll. You know what? I did not remember that that was your episode. I don't remember the episode title. Oh, my God. I don't remember the episode titles. Really? No. I agree. I think Monster at the End of the Book is a great episode. It's a great character intro for you. Great episode in general. I'm putting it down right here. You know, that's why we're giving away a signed copy of The Monster at the End of the Book, my, my main man. Ah, I did not realize yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And now we're going to debate all these. We're going to have all this conversation. And I'll, uh, so when I name one more, we'll have named eight. Do you want to get all the way to 10 and like, or do you want to just, is eight good and we'll debate it down? What do you want to do? I'll let me tell you good. my next one and you can tell me what you think. I'm going to okay. do after school special. I love the Colin Ford as young. I love the flashback that, ones, man, that show the kids struggling. Oh, with, yeah. So good. Wait, what was that one called? After School Special. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was great. So do you After want to get to 10 and we narrow it down? Or do you want you happy sure. with eight? Let's get to 10. See, is there anything else that, like you're like, ah, oh, this is yeah, a yeah, home yeah. run. We got to, okay. oh, hold on a second. I'm still talking about After School Special. Colin Ford is so good at, in it. So and, good. Uh, go Such a perfect casting. Tough tough thing to get do to, to find those guys to nail the young versions of the characters you know and love. And then yeah. Dean being a PE teacher, I don't, like again, I question that school's hiring policies. They don't seem to do background checks. They hire people immediately and put them in uh, yeah. the charge of children, but yeah. it makes for good TV. Yeah. Um. Jeez Louise. How about In the Beginning with Matt Cohen and Amy, Amy Gumminick? Now we get to go back to 1973, early John and Mary. Yeah, very Back to the Future. That's a fun one. Yeah. In the beginning. Uh, yeah. All right. And then, you and then one more. to throw one more in the, in the hat. What? I seriously can't remember what Heaven and Hell is about because we didn't, I don't have a, a cheat sheet. What, what, do you remember? Oh, Heaven and Hell was written, it was directed by Jay Miller Tobin, our friend Jay Miller Tobin. Right. Oh, he that's that scene about. where Dean talks about hell, that great shot of Dean sitting on the car. Oh, yeah. Crying. That's a yeah, great, just a great yeah. piece of acting. Yeah. By, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By Jensen yeah. Ackles. Yeah. Real yeah. solid. Yeah. yeah. Real solid. Uh, on the head of a pin um, is a good one. 
It's a it's a terrible life. It's a terrible it's life. It's a terrible life. We get to meet Kurt, Kurt Fuller, Fuller and it's got that sort of office or office space kind of vibe at the beginning. Uh-huh. You know? Uh-huh. And then they, they fight Sada. ghosts. They realize, oh, it's our destiny to fight ghosts because we're fighting ghosts, you know, yeah. even though we don't know we're brothers and we don't know who we are and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's a terrible life. Yeah. All right. Now we're, at, that was, now we're at 10. Now we're at 10 or do we need that another was 10. one to go? To- that, was, that was 10. Uh-huh. So let's go. Okay. Look, we know we've got one. And I think we both agree that. So let me read the list so far. Lazarus Rising, uh-huh. Jump the Shark, Monster Movie, Yellow Fever, Lucifer Rising, I Know What You Did Last Summer. The monster at the end of the book, after school special, in the beginning, it's a terrible life. I have to nominate um, an 11th. Sorry, I just realized the rapture, 420, is when we get to meet Misha's Castiel's host. I think that's pretty good. Okay. That's when we meet Jimmy? Jimmy, yeah. All right. So uh, of those, both of us get a must. Like, we've got, it's got to be this one. It has to be on top five. Well, okay. Let's take Lucifer Rising. We both agreed on that. So let's go ahead. And, uh, I'm sorry. Lazarus Rising. Let's go ahead and say Lazarus Rising is on there, right? Top five? Or we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah. yes. so yes. we're just gonna go, Lazarus Rising, in. right Lock, there, Lock that's in yeah. there. Now, you are going to say, why don't you, I'll tell you what, let's do an elimination round. You can eliminate any of them. Right now, you take it off the board. We're gonna switch it up. You can say, we're not doing that. Yeah, so man, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna read, read it to you again, ready? Yep. Lazarus Rising, Jump the Shark, Monster Movie, Yellow Fever, Lucifer Rising, I Know What You Did Last Summer, The Monster at the End of the Book, After School Special, In the Beginning, It's a Terrible Life, The Rapture. <laughs> I'm going to eliminate It's a Terrible Life. <whistles> did not see that coming. All right. <laughs> well, it's, it's a lesser of many evils. Okay. I got it. I feel like, you know, to me, the, the, yeah, there are like four others before that you named. I was like, well, it's got to be that. It's got to be that. Okay. I got to give a... Uh, just you guys talk about yourselves. I gotta text Kurt Fuller real quick. No, come on. I have a, I have another episode of Kurt in there that I really like. I nominated. Would you stop it? All right. All right. Uh, um, okay. All the, right. I, the, my turn to eliminate one, and I'm I'm eliminating it. Well, I'm eliminating it, even though I also nominated it. But I nominated it for impure reasons. I'm eliminating Jump the Shark, but only because I, it's, it shouldn't be one of the top five. I love the shark part. Again, so I cannot. I cannot stress this enough. Kids, if you are moving down any kind of pathway and there's a shart between you and where you're going, jump it. Honestly, Kripke would have named it Jump, jump the Shart if yeah, that had been. Exactly. Yes. There'd been better, okay. better ideas in that room. Okay. okay. So okay. now, Loser, I mean, Lazarus Rising, is. we've got one. We've eliminated two. We're down to nine. Well, we're just, we've, I, okay, we've I got two. I have two right now that I think are, they, they are, they have Lock to be it. in there. I yeah, think they're locked yeah. in. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say one that I think I'm is locked say, in. You wait, can, we're, and we're going to say it at okay. the same time. Okay, one, two, three. You ready? One, two, three. Monster movie. movie. And? Yellow Fever, right? Yep. So we've got three. We've got Lazarus Rising, Monster Movie, Yellow Fever. All right, so we have three that are definitely in the top five mm-hmm. Robin Rich review uh, episodes for season for two four. Spots. Lazarus Rising. Wow. Yeah. Two spots uh, left. Monster Movie, Yellow Fever. And now it's a battle royale to the death. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put one in there for you. And it's not even out of uh, kindness in my heart. I think Monster at the end of the book. I think it's a great character uh, intro for your character that became a big arc. You know, those, you. Th- those episodes like Lazarus Rising that introduce us to somebody that becomes a staple of the show, I think are super yeah. valuable and important. And also it's a very clever, very clever introduction of the whole profit idea of the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, that there are books that, that they discover these books that are their life. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, and the it's, opening scene, the like, opening scene in the sh- in the stores is great. So yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Robbie, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Unless so much. you take this off, <laughs> unless you knock yourself off the list. <laughs> I, uh, I got to be the oh, last. Uh, okay, that's four choices. We've got one left, and it's between the Rapture. Well, I, there's several. You want to read them? I'll read you. Yeah. Left. Lucifer Rising, which. To remind our people is the season finale. Dean and Sam are at odds. Ruby has tricked Sam into killing Lilith, freeing Lucifer. So he uh, kills Lilith in that epic scene on the uh, altar. Uh, I uh, know what you did sure. last summer. That's the introduction to uh, angels. Uh, uh, the girl thinks she hears angels, but she actually is an angel, you know, and all that. Yep. Um, yep. That's the uh, 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 great, uh, great episode with Julia McNiven. And yeah. um after school then, special flashback episode, D- Coach Dean, uh, Colin Ford uh, as, as Jared, being uh, a writer and actually showing his skills, finding uh, uh, support from the teacher. Really great. Right. 
um, in the beginning, which is, of course, a flashback to John and Mary. Uh-huh. And it's uh, you got Matt Cohen and Amy Gumanick, 1973. Mm-hmm. Great uh, flashback episode. Mitch Pileggi, you know, the origin story kind of. And the rapture. Um, yeah. I've got my 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 vote for what I would. Choose. I've got my vote for one more. Okay, we're gonna count to three and both say our votes. And if they're both, both we can debate it. We'll see what happens. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. The, the rapture. rapture. Hey, right. we, we agree. Okay, we got it. And congratulations to Misha Collins for uh, being in two of the best episodes wow. of the season. Wow. Well, that's it's his that's season. Something. So yeah. for the our final five. Our Lazarus Rising, Monster Movie, Yellow Fever, Monster at the End of This Book, and The Rapture. Now we have the unenviable task of deciding which is our favorite. Oh, geez. We have to do that? I mean, oh, I, no, I, I, I feel like you... Five. I know, but I feel like you should be on the record as saying you have a favorite. I know you like I to don't. play favorites with your children. Why couldn't you play favorites with this episode? I, that's, none of those are true. None, right. Anything, Nothing that comes out of your mouth is true. We'll be right back. Hey, guess what? We're We're back. back. All right, let's go. I think I think I think we've done uh, yeoman's work getting a great season narrowed down to five because there's so many great episodes. Any of these could have been in the top five and there's others that could have been the top five i certainly will be missing jump the shark um and i can't wait for the t-shirt that somebody will design anyway uh that's great again uh, to sum up top five in no particular order the rapture the monster at the end of the book yellow fever monster movie and lazarus rising yeah there um you know uh first time i just realized seeing everything uh, listed out that their book ending of the season is Lazarus Rising and Lucifer Rising. I just figured that out for the first time right here on live TV. Yeah, um, so well written, such a good season. I can see why it's many people's favorite. Uh, but I got to tell you, I know for a fact that some great episodes are coming up in season five, which I can't wait to start. I'm calling your bluff. You have no idea. You haven't seen it. I do, including uh, some epic episodes with yourself and myself. Uh, but not together. And the introduction of Mark Pellegrino's Lucifer, which is exciting. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so, I, you know, what, what do you, not knowing, so, Rich, just to recap, Rich and I have not watched this show from beginning to end. We've just seen little episodes here and there. So this is our first time. So, Richard right. Spade, Jr., what's your speculation for what happens in season five? Um, right now, it's like we know that Lucifer's been released. Uh, the boys are not getting along. How do they how do they pick up the pieces from the the fallout from Sam going, you know, pure evil and 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 the whole Ruby thing? And how do they pick up the pieces from that whole thing and move on? And how do they fight Lucifer? How's that? Honestly, happen? I don't think they do. I think this is one of the things you just walk away from and let the earth be destroyed. I'm pretty much sure in season five is about two to three episodes long and the whole thing implodes. And that's all she wrote. That's okay. Wow. Well, you know, I feel like that's what happened. Yeah. Well, you heard it here, folks. This is what Richard Spade thinks happens. I don't know how to speculate for season five, but I will tell you this. I bet it gets picked up for season six. <laughs> Just going, going, okay. going on a limb. I bet it's strong enough to get a pickup for season six. Well, I, Just to I'm in the first episode and the last episode of the season, so I kind of know where it begins and I kind of know where it ends. Oh, my God. But how do how do we get there? Well, I don't know, man. I think uh, I think some some crap's going to go down with Lucifer. I think that there's going to be Lucifer's, Lucifer's going to be a big part of it. And, uh, and, and the boys have to, they have to get back together, man. They've got to sort of, they gotta, um, yeah, they can't, we can't just, I don't want room. them to, you know what I mean? I'm going to speculate. And, and this is pure speculation because I don't know, but I'm going to speculate, just speculating that, we, everybody. that we have a little bit more of Castiel incorporating himself more as sort of a part of their team, as opposed to this sort of angel going, I can't do that for you. He's going to be sort of a little more part of their team, perhaps incorporating into, you know, finding out more about their human ways and, and, you know, and uh, being more part of the shenanigans on a regular basis. That's, that's my yeah. aspect. What do you think of that? I agree. Couldn't agree more. Yep. Really? I'm you know right in line with you. Were you checking no, your phone? But it didn't matter. I was, uh, I was going to listen, but then I realized that I'm not, but I will say this. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
I tell you what, you know, kids who want to um, learn comedy, join Patreon and just rob, watch Rob do what he does. You can't, like, just, that okay. We don't learn that in school. You know what I mean? You just don't, you just don't learn that in school, man. You can't learn it. You don't learn it on the streets. You got, you got to, it just, it's part of it, you know? <laughs> um, well, I tell you this, uh, after season five, you and I aren't on it for a little bit, right? Are you on it between? No. After season five, we're really in for a, I have no idea. I, um, I do. I really have no idea. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know we, there's some things I've recognized, but I have not, no, there's a lot coming up. I don't know at all. Yeah. Well, it'll be exciting to get through season five to, to watch season five because uh, I know it's a great season and it's uh, Eric Kripke's la final season. And um, Yeah, and hopefully I we know. don't, uh, 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 like, it, there won't be a strike in the middle, so it won't take us a, a calendar year and a half to get uh, through it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We like to do at least two uh, seasons a year, so hopefully we'll do five and maybe some of six this, this year. But uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. This has, as always, been such a treat to to talk to my friend Richard and discuss the show that we love yeah, so man. much. And, that we and know break it love. down to five episodes that are the definitive top five. No debate. No one will ever disagree with our choices. They're probably universally agreed upon as the five best of the season. And that's that's nice. no. They're the the the. Fortunately, it was five. We're five for five. We got the right answers. Those are the right <laughs> exactly. answers. Because there's definitely um, definitive answers. So, uh, hey everyone, we will be on a two week hiatus before the start of season five. That's maybe the not as good news. The good news is that Misha Collins will be joining us to help kick it off on March 25th. That's awesome. Uh, so Nisha Collins will be our guest for season five, episode one. So that'll be fun. To have and Nisha hopefully shortly thereafter, we'll follow up with a visit from Mr. Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> no, Mitch Hedberg is not with us anymore, but but check out his comedy <laughs> online. He's, he's so, so, so funny. I had the pleasure of seeing him live one time and it was, it was amazing. You guys um, turned me on to him and I think he's absolutely so hilarious. And yes. sorry that I never got to see him live. It really stinks. Uh, but at, at any rate, uh, thanks, everyone. This has been a, a really fun season. Um, if you're on Patreon, stick around. We're going to be doing a Q&A. &A, and then we're yep, going to announce... Yep, a little Q, a little A. Uh, and everybody awesome. else, join us on Patreon, won't you? We make it worth your while, I promise. Yeah. Right, Robbie? Thanks to the Patreon people and to everyone listening. Thank you again. And we'll see you next time. See you in season five. This episode of Supernatural Then and Out was hosted and executive produced by Richard Spate Jr. and Rob Benedict. Produced by Stephen Hine, written by Stephen Hine and Hayda Holsher. And edited and associate produced by Trey Moody. Ooh. Oh. Win somebody! <laughs> Music provided by Tim Wynn. The episode was recorded with the help of Sonic Fuel Studios. This podcast is from Story Mill Media. Follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at SPN Then and Now. And become a member of the podcast at patreon.com slash SPN then and now. I'm nominating Jump the Shart because, <laughs> because that's what Steve called the episode. <laughs> I have to nominate um, Eleventh Son. Sorry, I just realized the rapture, 420, is when we get to meet Misha's Castiel's host. I think that's pretty good. Or as Steve, Steve likes to call him Johnny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Castiel is back in heaven. We learn about his host, Johnny. Storybell Media. 